Yes, Lord. To know you. To be found in you. Know in you, Lord. I wanna know you, Lord. I wanna know you, Lord. Lord. You're my Lord. You're the best. You're my joy, my righteousness. You're my Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. You're my Lord. You're my joy. My righteousness. And I love you. Oh, I wanna know you, Lord. Oh, we need. Out of us, come on, baba, baba. There is nowhere I know I go. You're my love. You're my best. You're my joy. You're my righteousness. And I love to know you. Mm. Yes, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I want you, Lord. Oh, and I want. I love to know you, Lord. And I love to know you. I love to know you more. Can't let's send your Bible with me into the book of Philippians. Knowing Jesus. Philippians chapter number 3. And let us study the word of God. Father, here we are in your presence. Here we are one more time because you love us. You have called us into your hands. Into your court we come. Deep in our heart. Lord, we long to be near to where you are. And therefore let our praises rise like an incense unto you. Let our song appear unto you like an offering. Into your courts, O oh God. Lord, we know that you are here to receive it. Mm. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We worship you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Beloved, you're welcome to Ensam Radio this morning. My name is Brother Gabriel. 
It's always a great honor, a great favor that the Lord has given unto me to talk to you every day. This morning, my message is so simple. The surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ. The surpassing greatness. I want to bring these teachings in my teaching for the last week. Why are we withdrawing from God? We withdraw from him because we don't know him. <laughs> the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. The surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Brother Paul gave us a very powerful scripture in Philippians chapter 8. Philippians chapter 8. Brother Paul gave us the word of God that should guide our hearts to walk this life knowing that knowing that we have this God. But Paul said in verse 8 of Philippians chapter 3 Yes, furthermore, I count everything as laws compared to the possession of the priceless privilege. The overwhelming priceless, the surpassing wealth, and supreme advantage, supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and of progressively becoming more deeply and intimately mm, acquainted with Him, of perceiving and recognizing and understanding Him more fully and clearly. For his sake, I have lost everything and consider it all to be mere rubbish, refuse, drugs. In order that I may win, I may gain Christ, the anointed one. That is the amplified version. This is Brother Paul. This is Brother Paul. What about you? Yesterday, I had an opportunity to see to have a prayer meeting with some brethren and we worship the Lord basically when we ever we meet we don't have a team our team is to pray and see God so we are worshiping the Lord with this song and the Lord says son do you think you know me God will never ask you a question that you have an answer I said Lord I think I do he said you don't know me yet <laughs> he said you don't know me yet do you trust me as a Lord I do I think I do working with you for my lifetime Lord I know that every day you reveal yourself to me in a different way. That one is very clear. And the Lord says, son, can you give up things you treasure? Can you give up things that you value? Can you give them up? I said, my God, this is hard. This is hard. I said, Lord, I will do it. That's whatever you tell me to do, I will do it. He asked me, is there anything that you treasure in your life now? I said, yes, Lord. I've invested, I've wasted money on this. He said, can you give it out? I said, Lord, this is difficult, but I will do it. I will do it. If that is how you want to test me, if I know you, Lord, I will do it. Do you know him? My wife came back to me and said, Are you of yourself? Are you trying to do something? I said, Darling, he said I should give it out. So I have to. That I may know him. Furthermore, things that are counted 
as my gain. Things that are counted as my profit. Things that are counted as my investment. Things that are counted as my achievement. Things that are counted for my pride <laughs> that I could bust off. Because of the surpassing greatness of knowing him, he said, Give them up. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know God yet unless you are able to give up something because of him. What can you give up? Can you give up? <laughs> Sister, you don't know God yet. Can you give up? Because he has given everything up to get you. And the level of your ability to claim, to confess and proclaim that you know God depends upon how much you've been, even, you've been able to give up. If you've not given up anything yet, darling, you don't know God. <laughs> yes. It's as simple as that. Have you given up something to know God? And the price that we need to pay for knowing Christ is to give up things that is for our gain. Things that should be our privilege. Things that should be for our advantage. Oh, you have never heard this gospel before. But today the Lord is taking me because he's a son. The gospel that you have not lived, you can't teach. The gospel is a son. It has a mount at the level that I can use you. I can use you to distance yourself from things. Is the level that I can use you to minister to people. The gospel that you have not practiced. It's not a gospel that you can preach and teach others to obey. My God. My God. For things that I consider them. Clothes that I used to wear. And love them. And women will love me. And men will appreciate me. I thought that it was nice. It was beautiful. And the Lord said it was seductive. You were leading many to hell. Can you give up? And throw that cloth in the bean. Can you do that? The jewelry that when I put on. People were looking after me. Why you look gorgeous? Oh, I like your earring. I, I like your ring. I, I like your watch. Oh, the necklace that when you put on. People will admire you. You are so, so much admiration. The Lord will ask you. Can you give them up? For knowing me. Have you paid a price? <laughs> He, he, he doesn't say go and sell them. He said give them up. Can you give up something? Can you give up something to know him? Darling, knowing Christ will cost us everything that we have achieved before knowing him. Mm, 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 mm. And I like that. Rot it down. Rot it down. Knowing Christ will cost us of everything we have acquired, everything we have achieved, everything we have possessed, everything we have known before knowing him. The day we know him, they become rubbish. They become useless. He, they become priceless to us. They become meaningless. We can't attach value to them any longer. Mm. Pursuing God. The surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. Brother Paul said this. I count everything as loss. I don't have it any longer. <laughs> my wife doesn't belong to me any longer. My children doesn't belong to me. My car doesn't belong to me. My house doesn't belong to me. Anything does not be nothing belongs to me any longer. I don't owe anything. The day that you became born again, darling, that day you lost. You lost yourself. You lost your will. You lost your pride. You lost your privileges. You lost everything. Apostle Paul say, the day that I met Christ, I lost them all. It's a process. It's a process that they will begin to know Christ. Then they will begin to know Christ. Many things need to give way. Knowing Christ is a cost. And it is a priceless cost. 
But Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 8, because of the surpassing knowledge, because of the surpassing knowledge, the priceless privilege, overwhelming, precious, my God, precious, worth, and supreme advantage of knowing Christ. It is a supreme. He value it above all things. He rank it. Is there anything valuable more than knowing Christ to you? Sister, that thing is your God. Is there anything so important to you than knowing God? Sister, that thing is your God. Going to church today, Sunday. Is there anything that is more valuable to you than bringing yourself, not your clothes, not your earrings, not your wig, not your artificial makeup, than your artificial personality, but your natural personality? Can you present it to God? The Lord, here I am. If you are not willing to give up, you are not ready to worship. Because to give up means to surrender in worship. Surrendering in worship. Beloved, are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up? What am I talking about? Knowing Christ. Knowing Christ. Comes by two things. By what we give up. To take what he has for us. Knowing Christ is giving up. Things that we value. Things. It could be your education. Sister, can you give up your education to know Christ? Mm. It can be a husband. Sister, can you give the husband up to know Christ? Wow, that's hard. Hey, it can be your fiancé. Hey, brother, can you give up that sister up? Can you give her up for no Christ? Oh, Lord, I can't do that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I can't let her go. Hey, hey. It must cost you something. It can be position at your workplace. Sister, can you give up that job to know Christ? Mm. Brother, can you give up that position to know Christ? But pastor, what does knowing Christ got to do with that? Sister, it has everything to do with it. Brother Paul said things that they will profit to me. Sister, can you give up your job? Brother, can you give up the money, the advantage that you have to know Christ? Hmm. What about this? Can you give up your possessions? Your possession to possess Christ. Can you give up? The gospel that you have never understood. You can't live that gospel. But Paul said, I count everything lost compared to the possession of the priceless privilege of knowing Jesus Christ. The overwhelming and the supreme wealth. A supreme wealth and a supreme advantage. My God. Or progressively. Did you hear that? The amplifier said that progressively. I progress. I increase from level to level. From one standard to standard. So every standard that I go, I need to drop something behind. Becoming more deeply. Becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted. Acquaintance with friendship. Acquaintance. That you can cross every minute, every second to know him. Acquainted with him. It's a progressive awareness. It's a progressive giving up. And that is a problem. That is the problem. My dear brothers and sisters. That is where the problem is. In the book of Matthew chapter number 21. Turn your Bible with me as we go there. And learn something from there. Mm. There was the Johnson man that came to Jesus Christ. And he had many things. And he asked the Lord, Master, Lord. Jesus said, why are you calling me Lord? He said, good man. He said, why are you calling me good man? There is nobody who is good except God. He, he, he said, what must I do to inherit your kingdom? Hmm. And Jesus said, go and fulfill the law. <laughs> and the man asked Jesus, which one of them? 
which one which one and and and, and jesus said thou shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your might with all your soul that you will love the lord your god i think it's much switch chapter 19 go there with me please you will love the Lord your God. Uh, and Jesus knew what was in the heart of that man. Jesus knew that it was very difficult. It was very difficult. Uh, hey. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as thy son. That never as your son. The young man said unto him, verse 20 of 19. All these things I have kept them from my youth, yet I don't have peace, yet I am not convinced that I have eternal life with you. After you have done all that you can, and still so there is more room for you to come closer and know him more, it is a clear indication that your fellowship have never reached a level and a standard of knowing him. Nobody came to Christ. And they didn't give up something. The reason why we can't please him. The reason why we can't get what we want. And what he has for us. Is because we are not willing to give up. What we are holding. And what is holding us. What we are holding. And what is holding us from him. When we come to him. He takes us off. What we are holding. And what is holding us. Because anything that we are holding. Holds us. And keep us. This man. Said that I have done this. From my youth. I have served you. As a little boy Lord. But Jesus said. If thou will be perfect. Go and sell. All that you have. Hey, Give it to the poor. Go and sell them. After you have sold your properties, after you have sold your wealth, after you have sold your cars, give the money to the poor. <laughs> he didn't say go and give your house to your neighbor. He didn't say go and give that car. He said go and sell them and hand them to the needy, the poor. Go and give it to them. Wow. And come and follow me. Sister, what you are holding, if you can sell it, go and sell it and give the money to the poor. If you can throw it away, then go and throw it away. If you must throw it away, you need to. But if you can sell it, go and sell it and give that money to the poor. Because basically you are going to throw it away, by the way. The Bible says... When the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Mm. What is the possession that has possessed you? You find it very difficult. <laughs> God bless you, Ellen. God bless you, my dear. God bless you, my sister. Sometimes when we preach like this, we think that we're talking to ourselves. Yesterday, a young beautiful lady called me. I said, Daddy, I listen to you every day. God bless you, Ethel. She said, I listen to you every day. I said, wow. And how do you see it? She said, Daddy, it was very difficult very very difficult and beloved when i look at a, a beautiful pictures i said my god look at what we are giving up to come and serve you you give them to us and satan took hold of it and added sin to it which we call the values satan added pride to what God has made, we call it value. Satan come uh, brought material and curses to it, we call it values. And we find it very difficult to give them up. I said, darling, how did you make it? She said, Daddy, I found it very hard. I said, that is the cost. That is the cost. That is the cost. 
She said at the beginning it wasn't easy at all. I struggle. I said, not only you, darling. <laughs> Do you think I've already attained it? I was a poor sir. I have not attained it yet. But one thing that I do, I throw them. When the convention comes, I throw them away. That I may know him. I cast them. I throw them in the beam. I make them the dust of my back. The shadow of my past. That they will not hold me. Is it pastor when you are talking? It look as if you were talking to me. This morning I'm talking to you, somebody. I am talking to you that you have allowed something to arrest you and it is keeping you from going to heaven. Lord, the surpassing greatness of knowing you is compared to nothing. Eternity is to know you as eternal God. John chapter number 17. That they might know you. That they might know you, the eternal God, and your only son, Jesus Christ, whom you love. And you have sent a paraphrase. John chapter 17, verse 3 to 5. That they might know you. Sister, you need to throw so many things away to know Christ. You need to know, throw pride away. You need to throw away your certificate. You need to throw away your beauty. That Coca-Cola shape. Hmm. That lip, mama mia. That eyes, my God. You need to throw away that body. Sister, you need to throw it away and cover it. That Christ may put. Brother, you need to throw away that body. Ah, not attractive. Ah seductive body sister brother you need to throw it away if it is for this world that we can boast that we are the useless people in the universe do we still have something to boast it should be Christ Say a sister who am quadia and the ankayan sebinian fatabi now, say the way I am saying, can you listen to? Yes, I see a tune. You may be good. Have you wanted to know what to do? Pastor, I know the idea. I know the idea. Check a cra. Have you? Any idea what about so? What you mean? Call heavy, maybe? Hey, hell! No, 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 no. Light, light. And then something to go. Brother, are you willing to throw them in the bee? Are you willing to cast them up as a person because of the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ? Uncomparable greatness. Uncomprehensive greatness. My God, you can't measure it. It is immeasurable to know Christ. Are you willing, darling? Are you willing? Jesus spoke to the rich young ruler. Go and sell them. Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. The man went and he couldn't come back again. Why? Because he had many things that had held him captive. Yay! Every I got my boy where jai. Two three where jai. Now trust and quantity they will call hell. Ah. No, sister, you can't do that. Pastor, I've been able to stop all oh, but lipstick. I can't go out without it. Yay! Lipstick. Lipstick. Ah. Eh? No! 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 Jesus valued to me more than lip sharp. He valued to me more than face powder. He valued to me more than my spray. He even valued to me more than my house and my cars. Do you have anything to give up that you can possess him? Do you have anything to give up that I possessed you? Now said Jesus unto his disciples, very, very, I say unto you that it is very difficult for a rich man to enter into my kingdom. It is very difficult for people rich here, I mean people who are being possessed, people who things are possessing them. It's a possession. To be rich means to be possessed by something. Mm. 
Are you being processed? Men can't stop your baby fool. Now I'm saying you may be a Jew or Bosso. A Jew can't turn, can't turn so. Yes. A Jew and Nigerian are so. A Jew are some Jew. A Jew are more fair. A Jew and Kudim Jena with him. It has overcome and taken your pride, taken your joy, taken your peace, taken your harmony, taken your future. But you have no idea. Those things are possessing your inheritance. Let's go. A brother friend of mine has a deal. A deal that will cost 7,000 pounds. So he was just, comf you were just tossing. He was, the whole thing has taken his peace, his joy, and everything has been accumulated by those things. He came and said, Brother please join me and let's pray. We prayed. We prayed. <laughs> So within him, he thought that he still had to challenge and follow the money. Yesterday he came. And we were praying. And we are about to pray. And he says, so Gabriel, this situation has taken my joy. I said, sir, sir, this situation has not taken your joy, but it has taken your salvation. Can you let it go? He was supposed to go to London today and talk to a lawyer in regards to that. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I said, there are so many things that have taken hold of us unless we let it go. We can't make it. And he said, my friend Christian lawyer told me that the best thing to come out of this bondage is to let it go. The man burst into tears. She knelt now and prayed, Lord, I surrender it all. Either he has bought a train ticket or he has gone to hire a car. All the plans that he was making to travel today. He knelt down in my room and said, Brother, I am not going any longer. When he surrounded, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. Son, give him yours i said no i can't he said give him he said when you give up what you are holding i will give up what i am holding the man looked at my face and said brother Gabriel, what are you saying are you are you kidding me i said i'm not kidding you this is what god is telling me i should give up what i'm holding to you are you willing to give up God has many things to give you. Darling, I am not talking to anybody but apart from you, sister. Can you let it go? And God will give up. God can no longer continue to hold back things that are yours. The young man went thinking that he will lose everything. Thinking that he will lose to follow Jesus. We don't lose, we gain. Don't think about how you lose. Think about what you gain. No business person enter into business by considering the capital, but he consider the profit. The more investment that you make, the more profit that comes out. Surpassing greatness of knowing Christ will cost us everything that we have known before knowing him. But Paul was educated. But Paul had become a professor. But Paul had had more revelation than any person. Apart from Jesus Christ, the next person that received a lot of revelation, deep understanding to explain Bible, was Apostle Paul. And he said, because of the surpassing greatness of knowing him, I consider all these things as rubbish. Your past will always tamper with your future. Your past will always possess your people's future. Your future is in your past. In the belly of your past is your future. The seed of your past is your future. Unless you are able to sow it, unless you are able to let it die, the future will never emerge. 
the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. Why are we turning away? Because we don't know him. Because we are not willing to let it go. We are not willing to let things that are possessing us. Brother, I can't go out without Raza. I can't go out without makeups. I can't go out without perfume. Uh, 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 even as I'm talking to you, there was a time in my life, whenever I'm going out, I have comb, I have toothbrush. If a woman is more than Gabriel, <laughs> I don't know that woman. I have a perfume, I have makeup in my bag. <laughs> you may ask me, brother Gabriel, why were you doing that? That I may look attractive. I wasn't a womanizer. I was not doing anything to attract women. But I just want to feel like that. That is me. And the Lord says, son, it is time to let all that foolishness go. I said, God, are you talking to me? He said, yes. <laughs> Can you throw them in the bean? Wow. It wasn't a big problem because I knew that it was God. And I had the peace of God within my spirit do you have peace do you have peace by obeying his voice if you don't have peace if you don't have peace then it is not him unless you have peace to accompany what you are obeying it is not from god Adwa. i said for in fact, many of them are here. Many of them are Hey. Hey. In fact, many of them are here. 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 Massassin, I want to mean for hey, the Lord said, Give it up your plot, give it up your building for His glory, give it up your investment, give it up your money, give it up for His ministry work. That He will prepare a house for you in heaven, and you'll be one of the most happiest people in heaven. Can you let it go for the surpassing greatness? Of possessing him to know him means to possess him knowledge is possession everything that you know possesses you he, nobody can separate you from your knowledge you are valued by what you know you are rewarded by what you know we, 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 we the, the value the value that the price tag that people put on us it depends upon our value what we know for the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. That Christ may possess me. I want to become the possessor. I want to know him. I want to know him. I want him to possess me. I don't want material thing to possess me. I don't want my God. My God. I don't want fornication to possess me. I don't want lesbianism, pornography to possess me. I don't want football to possess me. What is possessing your heart? Can you let it Go! As I found out, you are say, we in so African films, so Sunday, you are see it. Me, I just was there, be was mention. Me, when I come from here, we did for be a man, but for no concern for a true for a true for the damn man, I'm a boss. I'm some for me to know. Can be true for any is a film, I'm a old man. Hmm. Nana one kaya tadibi anaba kubishano and then I attract a wano. Those your film stars, do you know them? Do you know where they pick? Do you know? Do you know? They that are possessing, do you know the outcome? Do you know the seed? Do you know the roots of it? The root of what has possessed you. Do you know it? We found it very difficult to let it go. Jesus said, I tell you, any person which is being possessed by anything. Take it very, it will find it very hard to enter into my kingdom. Wow. Are you having worldly things that possess you? Again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle 
than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. The eye of the needle is the figurative speaking. In Israel, when they build a, when they had the wall, they build the walls, they, they, they create a very small space. That space is the gates that people who were late when they closed the main gates there's a very small uh, hole called the eye of the needle that people human being can pass through when i was a little boy we used to we used to go and watch football and sometimes we didn't have enough money well what what, what what we normally used to do we jump the fence so all oh, sometimes because we they used to use uh used uh what they call it palm branches and while they use the palm branches we can squeeze the space and and, and, and pass through true that is the eye of the needle <laughs> you will understand it much if you have seen a fence that that fence is loose that you can break through and pass through that was how the eye of the needle is it's not a big space and jesus said that eye of the needle it is very difficult for a person who is sitting on a horse or a donkey to pass through the eye of the needle with that load what jesus was telling us is it is very difficult it is very very difficult for a rich person to enter into heaven than a person who is carrying a load a big load a big material fence want to pass through a small fence that there is an open mm. have you sent your cards to workshop before where that place is jammed and where parked there are some of these drivers they are very good they can pack the car and come out of the boot because the place is very small there is no space jesus says that it is very difficult for a car a big car to pass through a very small hole and, and be packed there and the driver will jump out of the window without passing through the door or the gate than a rich person to go to heaven does it make sense to you a person who is being possessed by the worldly things a person who is being possessed by the pride of this life a person who is being possessed by the the, the the lust of the flesh it is very difficult for that person to give up those things for heaven sister do you still, still find things very difficult to give up unless you give up what you have let me tell you what the lord wanted you to, to, to give up he want to give you he want you to give up lust of the flesh he wanted to give up the lust of the eyes and he wanted to give up the pride of life these three things that is all that god wants to give up do you think it's good anything that god wants us to give up it is not good when you wake up in the morning you need to go to the bathroom everything that you give up there is you don't need them have you ever lamented oh this morning i need to give up my pee, -pee my, uh, uh, my 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 wee i need to urinate i need to give up oh i was having running to my last night and i need to visit the toilet three four five times oh how much i give up oh i'm paying for it oh. do you cry for things that you give up that you don't need everything that god is telling you to give up sister they are rubbish they are filthy things mm. you don't call them like that if you begin to see them like that you won't have a pain of giving up giving up last giving up sickness giving up alcohol ah giving up drugs ah i give you give, 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 give me up sexy dresses ah 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 giving up those things is a problem do you think that they value more than jesus christ when the disciples heard this it was very exceedingly amazed another translation said that they were worried they were troubled then they said who can then be saved who because we all we are all rich people <laughs> the disciples they weren't poor christians are not poor people the day that peter came to follow jesus for that day he saw how wealthy he was the day he was no longer getting the money he was no longer getting the money from the fish he thought that he was a poor person when he came to christ he knew that he was a rich person wow sometimes the absence of what you are receiving will let you know the value of what you have missed the disciples were no longer going for fish therefore the money that they were getting was gone 
any. Hey, what about those tax collectors, the Matthew and those tax collectors? They were not getting the taxes any longer. So Peter said, Lord, then who can make it because we are all rich? We are rich people. In fact, the situation was very difficult for Peter. And therefore, Peter said, Lord, uh, please, uh, Jesus said, behold, uh, behold uh, Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this thing is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. He, Jesus heard them. He heard their argument. He looked through Peter that Peter was sad because Peter was rich. Andrew was rich. Simon was rich. All of the disciples, John, he was, all of them, they were engaged. Only Judas Iscariot was a poor person and therefore he lost it because he didn't have anything to give up. But he had everything to claim. If you don't have anything to give up, you can't claim anything precious. There are some people who have taken Christianity as an investment. Those who have left something behind, they don't run for the worldly things any longer. Mm. Those who have left the worldly things, they don't come to God and search for worldly things. The reason why pastor, the reason why bishop, you are thinking about the worldly things, because when you came to Christ, you refused to give up on them. Sister, until you give up, you pursue that in the Lord. The reason why many are going to hell because they brought so many things in God and they are still carrying it. They don't want to give up. So they have nothing to lose. And if you have nothing to lose, if you have nothing worth losing for Christ's sake, you have nothing worth attaining for Christ's sake. Write it down. For the surpassing greatness of knowing him, I need to lose so many things. Oh, this is, I thought that it was going to be one teachings. But the Lord is giving me so many things that I can't say it all this time. Are you willing to give up, darling? What is it? What is it? What is it? Then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Behold, we have forsaken all that we have to follow you. <laughs> Jesus said, that's it. There are more yet to come, Peter. You have not finished yet. It is progressively. He, Peter, you have not come to know yet. Because there are many things you are going to drop them behind you as you grow. Mm. When we went to class one, we carry our table, but we didn't take the books to class two. Mm. Life will drop things behind to get things ahead of us, sister. It's only Christianity that have not taught us to leave things behind to get things that are in front of us. Hey! When you went to school, the first year, I carried my table to class two. There were some classes you need not to carry your tables. Some of us, we need to carry our tables. I carried it out to attend P4. That that table has become class one table. I didn't need it any longer. But then I was growing tall. I used to grow taller quickly. So my mother... My parents need to buy me a desk, the long one. The one that I can put my books inside. In class one, I didn't need a desk. I needed just a normal table, small one. Class three, my school uniform began to become smaller. So I had to get different school uniform. My shoes were changed. Can you leave something behind to get something new? One of the things that little children find it very difficult, who are possessive. My big daughter, she gets all the things. The little one doesn't get new things most of the time because we try to buy expensive things, things that we think is valuable, that can last longer. If, if, if you don't have much money, that's how you do. You buy expensive things, let it be expensive, things that can last for long, so all the children can wear. <laughs> we call it wash and wear. So the big one, sometimes she found it very difficult. I told her, darling, if you're not willing to let it go, you won't get new things again. So one time I need to buy her a whole set of clothes. And I said, bring all of the old one. Let us transfer it to your junior sister. She wasn't quite impressive, but she doesn't care. 
I said, darling, you get new ones. But look at this. Even your sister haven't worn it two, three times. It's still new. I need to persuade her, by the way. <laughs> we can get second-hand clothes from our brothers. But when we come to God, nothing is second-hand. Everything is new. God has not told you to give up what you have to get what somebody is possessing. But to get things that belongs to you. What are counted as good? What are counted as advantage? But the Paul said, because of the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. Beloved, that is what my message for the whole week is going to be. Are you willing to give up? Sickness for healing. Ah, Bragebra. <laughs> what do I need to carry the sickness for? Some of you don't know that what you're holding is sickness. Are you willing to leave up cancer? That alcohol. Are you willing to give up cigarette? Ah, pastor, I can't leave up cigarette. It's a cancer, brother. The day that you catch the revelation of what cigarette will do to you, you will drop it. Are you ready to leave masturbation? You call it a fan. Brother, it's not a fan. It's not a fan. It's not a fan. You're going to get infection. You're going to get some diseases here on earth and eternal hell. You're going to suffer but are you willing to give up give the right name to the sin that you are possessing and possessing you and giving up will become so easy and so you look up unto jesus brother you are not willing to give up peter answered and said lord behold we have forsaken all and follow you what shall we have therefore that is going to be my next teachings just give it up when you give up don't ask him what are you going to get. Just come to him and say, Lord, I don't care what you give up, what you give to me. When God knows that those things are not what you are seeking, Matthew chapter 6. He said that your family father knows that you need them and he will give them to you. Some time ago, I used to fight a lot. Workplace, I used to fight. Hey! Not that I'm a very hard worker, I want money. I started searching for money when I was a little boy. So I know. Oh, you know. I'm a cool boy. <laughs> I know how to fetch money. I will get money for all cause. And the day the Lord said, Hey, throw that cool life away. <laughs> and leave that ashanti. <laughs> throw it away. Cast it out. That kind of looking for money, 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 money. I'm fighting and craving and looking for all this thing. Throw it away. And pursue me. It wasn't an easy thing. It is progressive. Recently, I went to work and somebody have gone for my shift. Gone to take it. If it were formally, I would have gone up and say, hey, young man, please, you can't do this thing to me. This is my shift. Go home. Basically, the guy was there waiting for me to come to sack him but i didn't go because i've passed the test <laughs> i don't know why he managed to go there the next day i went there and the, my colleague told me that guy was just said that he was just running around here and he came to stay here that when the person who is supposed to work here will come that he will go home but i came to meet him here the next day i said when i read down there when i was going to register they told me somebody have taken in my shift i called the office and the office said they don't know what has happened I said, well, I'm not interested to go to the world and fight with my colleagues. I will never do that. I don't have that interest any longer. Because of the surpassing greatness, I don't fight any longer. For things that belong to me, I don't fight. I don't fight. Because if it is really mine, God will give to me. When even I'm not aware. Because of the surpassing greatness of knowing him, we must be able to let things go. People may call you fool. I will talk much about that. People may call you, you are silly. Oh, you are weak. Mm. Let them tell you what sort of they, they name you to be. But God called it strength. God called it power. For the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ, I should let it go. Sister, what do you think you need to let it go? Brother, I just came this morning to exalt you. To let you know that there are many things that you need to let it go are you willing to let it go that christ might be attained when you die all these things none of them 
will be part of you. The day that I saw that human being dies, it changes everything. Do you know the, rest, the, the way to let it go? Number one, know that human being dies. Number two, know that when you are at a dying bed, you don't need all these things. Know that all that you need is the breath that you have today. And when your breath is taken away from you, nothing counts any longer. Those things will, will be devalued in your life if you value eternity. For the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ, let things die in your life. You find it very difficult to let it go. Look unto Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus. Jesus, I find it very difficult to let it go. Give me the peace. Sister, he will give you the peace. Give a try two days. Lord, I just want to give it up here. And I'm going to try you. Try Jesus. If the joy of losing those things doesn't come. And when you lose, you say, Lord, give me the joy of knowing you. This is what Brother, Paul, uh, Brother David said. Grant me the joy of knowing you. The joy of salvation. Grant it to me. May that be your prayer this morning. May that be your prayer as I'm going off. I want to pray with you. Put your hands on your chest and say, Jesus, I don't know you, but if there is anything in my life that has possessed me so much that because of that, I can't know you. Take it, Lord. Stretch for your hands and touch it. Take it from me that I may know you more. Take my sins away that I may know you. Take my lust away that I may know you. Take my pride away. Take things that I boast away. Take my profit away. Take my house. Lord, even take my life away. I give it to you that I may know you. Thank you. Give me your Holy Spirit back. Give me your joy back. Give me your peace back. Give me your good health back. That I may know the value of what I have given up for. I don't know your value, Lord. If you can let me, let me know your value. All these things that have possessed me will lose their interest and their power and their grip on my life. I thank you because you love me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. I give you the praise. I give you the worship. I give you the honor. I give you the glory because you have caused us to give up something that we might be able to get that of which you have for us. This morning, as I presented your word, as you gave it to me, to your people, I pray that as people that you are going to touch, their life will never be the same again. Their life will never be the same. Minister to them, oh God. Somebody is listening to you, Lord. You are speaking to that person to give up what I possess him, that you can possess him. Go in the name of Jesus. Thing that I possess the heart of people, I command you, lose your hold. Thing that have taken hold of people, I break you. In the name of Jesus, take your grip off from the children of God. Be loose. Lose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. You have no power fornication. You have no power lust. You have no power pride, deception, boastful. You have no power money, greedy. You have no power sensual sin, mental sin, secret sin, covetousness. You have no power malice, unforgiveness. You have no power. Go in the name of Jesus. I break your power from the children of God. I command you to loose them and let them go. Father, grant them your spirit. Grant them the joy of knowing you. That is more valuable than anything. Knowing you, Jesus. There is nothing greater than that. I thank you. I worship you. I magnify you, my Savior. Because you are good God. May your name be worshipped. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, I don't want to close this without telling you that we have many things to grab from this ministry there is nothing that we need to compete for than to know Jesus Christ
God bless you. Continue to listen to me every day on this network. And I bet you your life will never be the same again. As you listen to me, please be obedient to God. And let Christ change you. In Jesus' name. Amen.